Our other aspect that I, I like to highlight is the validation of the molecular international prognostic scoring system. And there were several presentations at ASH addressing this topic. Uh, the IPSSM was proposed uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and the paper is published now in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, Evidence. Uh, and this is the first model that incorporates molecular events in, in addition to the uh, revised IPSS elements. The IPSSM retained uh, most of the clinical variables except of the neutrophils, and then added genetic variables. Uh, and it allows also for missing variables to be counted to where you get a range of the prognosis and patients are divided into six categories in comparison to an average risk patient. And the question is like, should, you know, is this model better than the revised IPSS? Should we start, you know, uh, adapting this in, in practice? And, and for that, obviously, an external validation is uh, needed. Uh, so we looked at uh, almost 2,400 patients from uh, Moffitt database that had molecular uh, elements as well as the uh, clinical elements. Uh, we uh, recalculated the IPSSM score for those patients and compared it to the original publication. Uh, and we saw a lot of similarities. Uh, our patients actually uh, tended to have a higher risk of disease a little bit, uh, but the model uh, was shown to be uh, uh, very effective in uh, estimating leukemia-free survival as well as overall survival, uh, separating patients into uh, those six defined categories uh, of risk by the IPSSM. And the distribution of patients, uh, as mentioned, was very similar to the original uh, published uh, cohort, uh, with the exception that some of our patients uh, were higher risk because we see um, more uh, a referral uh, of, of a higher risk patients. I think the important other part is really looking at what does this risk stratification do or how does it change the risk of the disease in comparison to the revised IPSS. In the original manuscript, around 45% of the patients were Restratified in the risk. Uh, and indeed, in our cohort, we saw exactly the same number. And then around 7% of the patients in the original cohort were upstaged or downstaged in more than one category. And we saw the same thing in, in our cohort as well. Um, and I think other groups also confirmed similar findings. So I think, you know, this means that the IPSSM uh, is definitely a, a unique tool to better predict the outcome for patients. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, applied in, in practice uh, and the upcoming clinical trials because it really identifies more homogeneous patient group. Um, the, the question uh, still, again, I think uh, we should be able to answer is the impact of treatment when we upstage or downstage those patients. Uh, so for example, a patient that is considered a lower risk traditionally that we are restratifying as a higher risk are those patients we are going to move to transplant immediately. Uh, or on the other hand, patients historically we classified as higher risk, but their molecular risk is less. You know, Should we be treating those patients more like a lower risk? I, I think those still have to be answered, uh, but there is no doubt that this is improvement uh, uh, on the revised IPSS and predicting outcomes for patients.